that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. It's every day, bro. Welcome gamers and non-gamers. I don't ever want to like... You've probably seen a bunch of dank memes on the internet before. I don't even know if people keep saying dank memes. It's definitely like a 2016 thing and I just reminded of cringy shit. But you do remember, like, you, people you'll see them online now and they'll be cutting out a person and that person will be in a place that, like, they aren't supposed to be in video form. To the average viewer, that shit's hilarious, and that is usually the making of a good meme. So if you're looking to make some good jokes, you wanna just make some people laugh, this is the go-to way to do that simple, and I'm gonna show you how to do this in under 10 minutes, or hopefully, I usually ramble pretty damn long, and everyone's like, why you keep talking? We just wanna get to the effect, why you keep going? Anyways, as you saw at the beginning, we're just gonna cut out Shrek from the illustrious movie, Shrek. And it's this clip right here. Oh, that's not very nice. It begins like this, if you haven't seen Shrek. So it's a very simple scene. Um, usually when you're rotobrushing, brushing, the best clips you want to take are from images that are still. So the camera isn't moving, it's not panning, it's not doing any sort of slow movement because that's gonna really throw off the rotobrushing. brushing. Um, so having a still scene, a still image where you can see the character in the background, it makes it much easier to like download what you want the move what do you want to cut out and what do you want to get rid of i would only other suggest that you don't pick something that is too close to um like let's say the the character is wearing a blue shirt and the background's blue you're gonna have a lot of trouble luigi on a green black background it, it's hell yoshi on a skyline don't even go there so first thing we're gonna do here uh with shrek let's put this book up to full so you can see this is your composition, if you've worked with After Effects, you've seen this before. The composition stays as it is, and on the top bar here, you'll see a lot of fancy dancy symbols. Um, the one we want to be working with is with this little dude, like, whoa, whoa he's trying to dodge the, the paintbrush, like, whoa, get out of my way, oh, it was awkward. And then you click on the composition you want to work with, which we only have one right here, so we click on the clip. It'll take us to layer, don't freak out. This is just where you're going to work with it. It's one of the few, like, not every effect does this. Uh, can be confusing, so most effects you don't go into the layer window, but this one will take you into the layer window to work with the tool. Make sure you're lined up with the first frame of whatever clip you're using, because that, that's more important than maybe, like I in the past didn't do that, so I started roto brushing, and it would not, like let's say I started from like here, it would do this to the end, so I'd do it, but then I'd have to go from the start again, and there's no real point to do that, because the way the, the actual tool works, is it will look at the clip from the start to end and uh, it'll figure out based off of what you've suggested to it how to cut out the clip. It's very good and they've actually recently updated it so just make sure you're starting at the beginning. Oh yes, this is important too, I forgot. So the, uh, my settings are usually with whatever my videos are. Um, it's at 29.97 frames. Uh, you want to make sure if you're using roto brushing uh, that it matches the frame rate of your clip. This is a movie, so the frame rate is going to be... Am I wrong here? I'm pretty sure it's this. So the way roto brushing works, you'll have this window on the side, and there's a lot of stuff here that you really don't need to think about. It's more for refining. Um, we'll get into that in a bit. What you really want to focus on here is your paintbrush. If you hold down control, um, and then you move the mouse up and down, you'll actually be able to make the brush bigger or smaller. A little fancy shortcut uh, that I didn't know for a little bit when I was starting off a few years ago. Um, and basically, when it's green, that means you are selecting what you want to keep. You press Alt, however, you'll see it turns into a minus sign. That'll be removing. So that'll help if you want to collect or remove any part of the clip that you don't like. So first I'm going to just do this really quickly and we're not going to show all this. Uh... So here we go. It's a very rough outline of Shrek, um, but it's not perfect as you can see. There's definitely some pixels on the edge here that aren't collected when we're doing this regular brush. So how do we fix that? That is where the settings come in. So feather, that's a pretty regular term. Feather basically means if you have a shape, uh, it'll make it so it fades around the edges. As you can see here, this is what it did to it when I pulled it. Uh, when I don't pull it, it makes it a refined edge. When you're doing stuff like this, you're more often than not gonna want to not feather it, so just make sure that is down. Contrast, uh, I think this is just more selective with the colors. You don't need to be an expert in any of this, by the way. 
This isn't Skillshare, this is YouTube, this is me. And honestly, you learn a lot of this stuff when you're just trying it out in different situations. Um, and like I said at the start, it's really to be used um, to find your, find a, figure out how to do a thing usually. You're trying to, usually you're trying to do a particular effect and you're like, how do I do that? And you use some tools from some programs and you don't use the rest of the program. That comes with doing YouTube. Um, but you might, if you find that you like this stuff, then I would recommend to you that you take it further, take more tutorials. That's generally all right. Um, and again, this is the first frame. So you're asking, whoa, bro, yo, bald guy, hey, whoa, what, what, oh, what? How do I get the rest going? What the heck? Okay, so you see this freeze down here? That doesn't freeze everything. It actually makes the whole thing. I don't know why it's called freeze. Freeze, fucko. There he goes, look at him go. He's like, that's not very nice. And it'll just roll. It'll pick up all the frames you want. Um, and that's it. That's the whole tutorial. Thanks for watching. Just kidding, you've gotta wait a second. So, now that the freezing is done, you unselect that boy and the whole clip will be outlined. And if you take it back to composition, there he is, he's all outlined. Um, but there are a few issues that you'll notice if you play it back. Shrek over here will have his underside, it'll still have the ground, and we don't want that. There are these settings on the side that we probably could have messed with to make it so, but in my experience, you'll need to keep trying and redoing it in order to get the perfect, uh, outline and you may have to go to individual frames so the first few as we can see they were like fine also uh, i didn't mention this you can select uh shrek there he is you can select these different icons below and what these do is it makes it so your man is outlined um further these this here is a little bit you don't even notice that you can mess with this stuff if you move this region, it'll only roto brush whatever in whatever is in that region. So, if you have something over here that's already roto brushed and you don't want to fuck with that again, you just take it out of the region, and it'll make it so each time you render it, it doesn't have to do those frames, because uh, it does do each frame individually, and that takes up more time. So, my recommendation would be to just like you don't have to. It's more if you want to. Um, smaller clips like this doesn't really doesn't really need that. If you're doing longer clips though, then I imagine it'll get a little more dicey. You know, I and mean, you can decide the color if you're into that sort of thing. Get it to be like yellow, green for Shrek. Make sure it matches our man. Hey, I said green like Shrek. There we go, perfect. A handsome specimen. So what we wanna do, I won't show all of this, uh, we're gonna fix these corners. I think if you mess with some of these, it'll make it cleaner. So again, feathering will do that. Um, and shift edge, I believe, pushes the edge from what's already there. And then chatter, yeah, that's the one we wanted to work with. The outline, if you saw it before, the chatter was um, not super good. There's also motion blur that I don't really mess with, because motion blur can sometimes look good and sometimes can look really cheap. So I don't want to really mess with that. But the more you mess with this and the propagation, all that really is doing is it's uh, figuring out what you want and what you don't want and then it's remembering and it's searching more of the area. So again, we're starting at the front of the clip here. Um, and what a lot of rotor brushing is, is taking this brush and making sure that it's selecting the correct uh, parts of your image. So all I would say, if you're like, oh, this first frame, it, it brings this in, or where the Shrek's ground is, what I would say is the first frame it comes in, you want to get rid of it as soon as possible. So like here, it's a little bit ambiguous where the ground is, so make sure you just deselect it, and then further frames will remember that. So that's generally what you want to do, find the individual parts of each frame that are not correct, and then it'll correct each frame further. This gets a little hard if things are coming in and out of the camera, such as, uh, where is it? His arm does this at one point where he's like, it's just a donkey. It's sort of right there, his hand's like a little red. So you just have to go back in, select it. And then there's another part over here where his hand and fingers don't quite, they look gray because of the, the shading. 
And then it also does this because uh, he goes like that. I'll meet you back here when I've done the entire thing. Welcome. We've got it. I've already done and dealt with this. But what did I do with it? Um, there was a couple things. I wanted to make the ground come back because I wanted to make it so the ground looked like Shrek was still in the clip. And so if that's another thing. If you're going to just put it back in the same clip and just remove a couple things and throw in something else, you can um, get away with crappier roto brushing. In Photoshop, I made that simply by using the stamp tool. You press Alt and then it will select um, that part of the picture and then you can stamp it. And if we did it like that, it would put Donkey there. But we do this for the whole thing, keep Alt clicking, and then we got that. You can actually do this a little bit better, I was just trying to finish it. But then I took that into Premiere, put it behind Shrek old boy, and it just looks like he's here without a fear. And then one, two, three. Oh, that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. It's every day, bro. Thank you for watching, everybody. If this was of help to you, I'd appreciate a like. Um, and let me know if there's any sort of uh, tutorials you want to see regarding any sort of uh, After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop stuff. I'm not an expert on anything individually, but I, I do know how to use this stuff for videos in pretty uh, versatile ways. So that's just what, I, that's what I'm just trying to do for the homies. Um, so thank you all. Uh, it's been a lax, uh, it's every day, bro.